Hello, I'm Liam and welcome to my allotment tour for January. On the tour I talk about what's growing down here on the allotment and jobs I hope to do over the next few weeks. It's a really cold day down here, so let's get started. At the end of my plot I have some blueberry bushes, four blueberry bushes in all, and if I get in here it's possible to see a few buds starting to form on some of the stems, but they are still really small. In late autumn I did apply a thick mulch around the base of the blueberry plants and it is a really good time to do this. The mulch helps to feed the plants and suppress the weeds. Alongside the blueberry plants I have my overwintering garlic. I'm really pleased now with the germination. The cloves I planted did take a little while to germinate. I put them in the ground in October it is possible to sow garlic probably right up to the end of March, although I prefer to do it in the autumn. There are 65 cloves in all, and even though I used my homegrown garlic, the garlic I grew last summer, the germination rate has been excellent. I reckon over 90%, if not a little bit higher. Any squares that haven't germinated, I may put a schlot in just to make good use of the space. I'm planting the garlic through weed control fabric because that really reduces my work, especially in the spring. The fabric is biodegradable and degrades away to nothing. Up from the garlic bed I have a couple of empty beds. The far one over the end there is where I hope to plant my shallots and there's a bed next to it that I haven't worked out what to do with yet. On both beds I applied a mulch of fresh compost over the top to be ready for the spring. Immediately alongside the garlic bed I have my old brassica bed from last year. The kale plants which I planted in spring last year are still growing really strongly. I haven't eaten any leaves off them for a while now because I think they're a little old but I'm really amazed at the hardiness of the plants and I have a couple of small cabbage plants at the front there. Those cabbage plants have grown additional heads so I have actually harvested the biggest head off them but you can see the two stems on that one and on this plant over here one stem one I have recently picked. By the leaves you can see that they're being eaten by something probably little slugs. Alongside the brassica bed I have my leek bed. Now the leeks are definitely looking a little tired. I didn't harvest them in late autumn deliberately to hold them back for the spring. Despite how they look I'm confident that when the warmer weather starts to arrive in the spring they'll start to swell up and I'll be able to harvest them then providing plenty of leeks for soups throughout March and April. At least that's the plan. Up from the leek bed I have my parsnip bed. I've dug up a few parsnips at the end there. It's a cold December day and I've just popped down the allotment to see what was available to harvest. I've been able to dig up these parsnips here. I'm quite pleased with these. There were a couple which were a good size, well maybe three a good size, and then I did have a, a few like these at the end here which are a little bit uh, skinny but maybe there's enough there if I wash and peel them to be able to roast them. And there are a few beetroots along here that can be harvested, but this is an example. Something is enjoying them. You can see the holes which have been eaten into the bulbs. I've really stopped eating them and this bed I'm waiting to clear away and start afresh. That is once I've finished eating the parsnips. Next to the leeks I have another bed that I have mulched and covered over. And up from that bed I have my winter cabbage. And the thing I'm looking most forward to of all in the spring are my broccoli plants. I hope they're coming out well on the camera. I might change my position to see if I can get a better look at them. These are the broccoli plants, nice and big and supported. Two things I found are important down here on the plot. One is covering with a net to stop the birds getting at them because they enjoy eating the leaves. 
and the second is to support them with strong canes, otherwise the wind blows them over. They're looking good at the moment, and hopefully in March, perhaps April, the flower heads will start to form, so the broccoli heads, and I'll be able to start picking them. And next to the broccoli bed, I have another bed that I used to grow potatoes last year that I threw my spent tomato compost, the compost I grew my tomatoes in last summer, which is why it looks a little bit lumpy. But that should be breaking down and the bed should be ready to use come spring. The bed, which is covered with fleece, contains radish and perpetual spinach. I'll just take a look under the fleece to see how the plants are doing now. One thing I did notice is that because it's been so cold here, the bricks, I'm not sure if the microphone is picking this up, but the bricks are frozen onto the fleece. I'm going to have to give this a tug to release it. There we go. Shows how cold it's been down here. And the fleece is sticking to the frame as well. I just need to remove a brick. Well, these are the plants underneath. The plants here, that's perpetual spinach. Not looking very large at the moment, but I'm hoping that they're strong enough to survive until the spring arrives when they should start growing more strongly. And next to those, I have a row of radish. When I press down to try and feel the size of the radish, they're still quite on the small side. I'm not sure what's going to happen with those. Perhaps I planted them a little bit late in the autumn, but there again, they may pick up when the warmer weather arrives and I'll have a very early harvest of radish, which would be great if that were to happen. I'm going to cover them back over and hope for the best over the next few weeks. Next to the perpetual spinach and the radish, I have my strawberries. When I next come down here to work, I'll remove the steel mesh that's covering them to make sure that the plants are weed free, ready for the start of the new growing season. This bed here had dahlias and my rhubarb growing last year. I haven't cleared away the dahlia stems yet. But excitingly, next to the dahlia stems, I have my rhubarb. You may be able to tell by the different coloured layer around the rhubarb plants. I put a thick mulch down. And through the mulch are growing these new rhubarb stems. The largest one there, but little stems all around as well which is a great sign that the plant is coming back. Hopefully at some point during March, I'll be able to enjoy some freshly picked rhubarb stems. I don't force rhubarb, I just wait until they're ready. Up from the rhubarb, I have my apple tree that was planted last year. Have a quick look at this now. It's still very early. I can't see any buds forming on the branches yet. It looks in good health though. Venturing into the fruit cage that contains my gooseberry and currant plants. Let's see how they're doing. Looking at this gooseberry bush, maybe very early signs of buds forming on the branches. It's a very spiky affair that gooseberry plant. But this black currant bush, the buds are really quite well formed. I hope the camera's picking that up. Now there are a few older branches, like this one here. And the thing is with black currants, the older branches fruit a lot less. The new branches, which tend to grow up through the centre of the plant, need to be thinned out to allow air to circulate through the plant which helps stop the fruit spoiling and puts as much energy as possible into the remaining branches and the fruit. I hope to prune those in the spring. 
next to the black currant bush I have this red currant bush oh there are some orange things on that stem there I may prune those parts away I'm not sure exactly what that is I may have to look that up I don't think it should be there though along from the red currant bush I have a couple more gooseberry bushes and like the other gooseberry bush I showed at the beginning they don't look as though they've got many buds on them yet one thing I haven't shown that I've just noticed is that I have wood chippings in between my raised beds and they're quite big animal footprints along I don't know what's passing through here or whether it's a small rodent that is burrowing looking for anything to eat in the mulch well whatever it is I hope they're enjoying themselves Alongside the fruit cage are my canes, my hybrid berries and my raspberry canes. Now I've been meaning to change the supports here for the last few months but I haven't got around to doing it yet. And now because of the cold weather it's a job I don't really fancy doing because it's a lot of tying up with cold fingers. But my plan is still to buy some new supports, knock them into the ground and retie in the canes. That should make a big difference and the last thing to show is my poly tunnel which is looking a little bit slimy I want to come down and wash that slime off before the growing season starts I'm interested to see what the thermometer is showing inside the poly tunnel well 8 degrees at the moment, it feels colder than that, there's a cold breeze blowing over me. But the minimum temperature, just noticed it has been minus 4. At some point over the last month it's been minus 4. I'll clear that now to see what happens over the next few weeks. Now, minus 4 inside the polytunnel, I'm not surprised because I've kept the polytunnel door open all winter but even if the polytunnel door was closed I would still expect the temperature only to be maybe a degree or two warmer than it is outside because it's so drafty in here. I'm going to use the polytunnel for germinating my seedlings. To do that I'll put a plastic greenhouse inside the polytunnel because that will be easier to keep warm. I'm not going to start now though it's just too cold for the moment and I hope to get going in a few weeks time. And that's it, that's my allotment tour in January. I hope you liked the tour. Please let me know by leaving a comment or hitting the like button. And for more videos like this, please subscribe to the YouTube channel in the usual way.